pilot programs testing out guaranteed income are popping up around the country as local governments look for new ways to address poverty in their regions. The programs provide select people with a monthly no-strings-attached stipend. And according to an article from Insider, these programs are actually working. So for more on this, we're joined by author of that article, Michael Benutalo Mantovani. He's a contributor for Insider. Thanks for joining us, um, Michael. So this is really interesting, and I think you showcase um, one that may be happening, because I live in the Philly area, and I think there, you showcase one in that area as well. How do these pilot programs work? So the program that I specifically wrote about was uh, funded in large part by a uh, donation from Jack Dorsey. Uh, I believe he donated $15 million to be used around the country. Um, and the nonprofit mayors, uh, nonprofit group Mayors for a Guaranteed Income worked with uh, different cities to implement these programs. So the uh, program I wrote about specifically, I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, mm -hmm. right next door to Durham, North Carolina. Um, and they did a program last year, uh, or I'm sorry, earlier this year, um, implementing a $600 a month, no strings attached stipend uh, for uh, 109 of the town's residents. So what's the difference between universal basic income and guaranteed income programs and who qualifies? So universal basic income is universal. You, me, um, uh, anybody living in, you know, beneath the poverty line, the media, the universal basic income is everybody. These programs were targeted. Um, and so I, I can't speak to the others, but the, the program that I wrote about in Durham, they chose um, 109 uh, formerly incarcerated people. Um, and so the, uh, the the benchmarks were that they had to be 18 or older. They had to have been incarcerated from uh, since 2016. And they had to fall below, I believe it was 60 percent of the median income uh, for the area. And they found a pool of 247 residents that met those criteria from there they selected 109 residents. Um, how they selected those, they don't know. They worked with um, researchers from the University of Pennsylvania in Philly, and um, they chose the residents, uh, whereas the rest of the pool was put into a uh, control group. Um, and from there, the people who were chosen, the 109 residents, they got $600 each month, no strings attached. They didn't have to report how it was being used. There was an optional survey element or uh, storytelling element, um, but there was no, uh, there were no strings. It was here's $600, use it however you see fit to make so, your life better. I just want to clarify a little. You read, you, what, one of the things that you wrote was that the University of Pennsylvania is sort of studying one of these programs, which then I got all completed in my head. Um, but... I thought it was really interesting that, of course, a program like this would get pushed back because we're talking about ex-felons and why should they get free money? And basically, you know, those putting the program together said, shove it. Like, we're going to pay for these people one way or the other. So let's pay for them now to help them get stable. Mm. And so then what was the result? I mean, was this program successful? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was one of the most uh, kind of important bits of information that I got and and one of the most important bits of the story that I wrote was about Durham's mayor pro tem Mark Anthony Middleton he said exactly that we're going to have to pay for these people one way or the other whether through incarceration or through you know basic guaranteed income so why not pay on the front end and help them become uh, community members uh, rather than you know so whether or not it worked i think the evidence is very much in the fact that in this program, there were zero cases of recidivism. Uh, not one of these people went back to prison within within a year. Um, two of them did due to prior convictions. These people knew they were going to go back to jail. Um, the program knew these people had to serve time. Uh, but from the start of the program to, I guess, today or the end of the program, um, th there were no there were zero zero cases of recidivism amongst the 109 recipients. And, um, and, and uh, you know, Mayor Pro Tem Middleton said, uh, you know, people who are financially solvent, they make better neighbors, they make better members of the community. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's help them to become better members of our community. And I think like the key here too for people to realize is, you know, th it's not food stamps that you have to spend, you know, has to go to food. It's not like subsidizing your housing, has to go to housing. You get to decide how to use this money to make your life more stable. And I guess you could be reckless with it, but I presume what they found is that people generally weren't reckless with the money. 
No. People were buying food. People were buying clothes for their children. Um, people were, you know, the one woman I chose to focus on, her name was Tadrika Lewis, and she's amazing. She's since started a nonprofit for young black girls in Durham. Um, she's, a, she's a really, really, really wonderful woman. And she bought a car. And when, when you say that uh, on a surface level, she bought a car. Well, I thought this money was supposed to be for food or for, mm -hmm. yes, but she bought a car so that she could better do her job. She needed a, a reliable vehicle to, to perform her job. And now she's earning more money than she ever has because she's able to have more reliable transportation to better do her job. And so when you think of it, well, she bought a car, she bought a new car. You know, that's not how you're supposed to use this money. First of all, it's, it's nobody's decision how they use this money except their own. And second of all, when you get past that first layer, it is it is helping her become a better member of the community in Durham. Right. Um, and so yeah, that was the thing. It was, again, Mayor Pro Tem Middleton said, we don't ask stockbrokers how they spend their money. You know, why should we ask these people how? Granted, you know, there could be an argument that it is taxpayer funded. Right, because, yeah. But, but that's the basic idea. This is your money. Do whatever you want with it. Some people may use it for, you know, ill means, but most people don't. And and statistically, through the storytelling aspect of this program, it was proven that people are just using this for necessity. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. I'd like to see the outcome of some more of these um, these uh, programs. Uh, I know you want to ask him about his guitars, but you, we can't. But I know, we're we running out of time. Yeah. Uh, but very sweet <laughs> axes behind you, Michael. Uh, thanks so much for joining that was my us. Last, that was my last job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very sweet.